Hello and welcome to another coaching video and in this one we have a gold Rek'Sai with a gold Warwick and it seems the Rek'Sai is someone who either got perma banned or basically said hey look it's my teammates fault I go and get to diamond I can't leave platinum I keep going back down to gold yeah no because they made a new account and yet 50% win rate still gold gold one platinum four ish MMR so great for you gold players who are kind of making that final push towards the end of season oh, split one of season 13 to get that platinum let's see what our Rek'Sai is able or unable to do in this particular game that may or may not be the root cause of their problems other than their teammates. Gwen mid versus Ivern, so your standard stuff. LeBlanc versus Scion, so your standard stuff. Ezreal Nautilus versus Seraphina Filios, that is actually kind of normal. Usually for Korean games, this isn't a Korean game, it's in a US game, but usually for Korean games, we very much have uh, these weird bot lanes, you know. Weird picks everywhere, but especially bot lanes. Now the Rex has gone from red to Krugs to Raptors, and we're finishing at half HP at 226. Yeah, no. Like, this is a Rex I made too. Like, this is, you should be way healthier than this. And now, obviously, your bot lane are a bit pre-chunked, which is expected here. You got a leash from them. And the Warwick at this particular stage has actually done a cheese strategy. We don't know this. Oh, my goodness gracious. I'm pausing at the wrong moment. Rex I goes in. Okay, let's look at this from the full perspective quickly. Then we'll adjust, address the, uh, the, the Warwick's little vertical jungling there because I've just had a coaching session where this happened. Live coaching session too. Right, Rek'Sai over the wall, into the brushes. Hello, knock up. You know, we'll just press the cues a little slow. We'll just, uh, oh my good, oh good, oh good. Oh good golly gee. Well, I don't know what I was witnessing there. And don't forget, I have actually updated my jungle improvement PDF to have all the information necessary to take you from meta to meta from season to season, along with in-depth jungle video courses for your MMR to take you to the next level faster, better, stronger, and one-on-one -on -one coaching and a coaching vod library along with a whole bunch of reviews to show you just how great it is. Rikayu.gg is a jungler's learning paradise. Click the link in the description below to become the jungle diff forever, be it growth tips sold separately. There's a lot to unpack here, I think. Okay, so first and foremost, the Warwick does a very stereotypical thing of aggressive junglers to say, look, I know in this elo you're not going to ward this buff. I know you're not thinking about me invading you. Therefore, I'm just going to take your shit. Okay, that's fine. Fair play. That's why I don't necessarily like when Rex has, what are we at, 253? Or any jungler kind of just chills on a buff. Like at worst case scenario, there's an Ivor in here, right? You also have a Warwick against you who's just literally going to sit here. That's why. Against invaders, I'm okay kind of placing a ward here in the river, but then you want to move your body to protect up here. If you think that you might be invaded like this, ward this sucker at 108 and go and start down here. Or if you're, in Rek'Sai's case, ward it at 1, go back to base, get yourself a scanner, and then you can go ahead and do your Red Raptors Krugs look to gank bottom lane. You can also go Red Krugs Raptors and loop around the top side. Pay attention to where the leash is. If there's, a no, if there's no leash, and you don't know where they began, well, that makes things more interesting, but it doesn't because you're Rek'Sai. And you have a 56% win rate and should be hotfixed. And the enemy jungler is a Warwick. You understand the disparity in, in champion power here. And of course, now you would see this and go, okay, I don't really care because I'm going to focus on bottom lane. Bottom lane ganking meta. I can see my mid is gankable here with the iPhone. And, um, you know, top lane is also something that's existing. So we're going to go in for this. We think the Warwick is probably doing some kind of 4 camp, 3 camp, whatever. We don't do the proper animation cancelling on our Q. The mechanics are absolutely horrendous. We don't know our true damage by damage. We go all the way in under the turret instead of just taking the fact that we probably burn flash. You know, well, we did burn flash. So if you burn flashes there, that's great. A badly executed gank that burns flashes, we can live with that. And then obviously, if the Gwen's low or whatever, we can deal with that. The Warwick now is able to come across here, rotate quickly, pull back to his blue side, and the Rex side is going to have absolutely nothing available to her whatsoever. Now, did she recognize that all her blue side camps were gone? Let's have a look. Why would a Warwick come from the top side with 12 CS from this particular angle? Like, I understand you might think it's this. But then very clearly you have to look at the timer of your gank. Like we finished at 226 on these Raptors half HP. We go in for this gank, 230, 235. Then we do our 240, 245 classic level 3 gank. At least Rek'Sai gamers always know these things. And Warwick will be crossing from the blue side to this side. He's most likely already on the red. You know, I, I, I could see feasibly some kind of rotation. But not without red at that particular stage, right? Like it doesn't seem like it would be a very classical thing to do. 
Uh, no, you know, there's no reason for this to happen whatsoever. So, because of the fact that the work ro rotates from this particular side, which of course is very, very important here, watch this. Here we go. There. Why would you rotate from behind? So even if the timer, 243, yeah, 243 gank here, sooner than expected. The Warwick at most, if he started here, is going through here, crossing over, and wherever he might be, he's going to be rotating through this angle or this angle, most likely the middle, right? He's not going to go all the way swooping around when we've got a great angle of approach here, right? You can see this. We've got a nice angle of approach. There's no reason to go around. Obviously, you can also press the timer on the blue, and you see all of that stuff, but that should be the same as it is. So the Rex side completely missing that opportunity, and we also see the Warwick go down. Right? You see the warrior go down, so why would he go down if he already has a blue buff? Exactly. Now, what does that mean for your jungling? Now, in the bronze coaching I had yesterday with this, was a Diana started bottom side with sequencing up, had the exact same cheese. We got to the top side here, we realized everything was gone. What, we, what, what did the player want to do? Wasn't sure. I said, okay, listen, go midline. There's nothing you can do here. You got cheesed. They're falling back to their red side, most likely. They didn't show crossing this. Your mid lane's being pushed in. Just go for a gank. That's all you can do. There's nothing else you can do. It makes your life quite simple, actually. Shit, I got cheesed. Better do something about it. And in this particular case, because you know that your blue side sh was gone and this ward is absolutely stupid, then why don't you just go down to the bottom side and gank the bottom lane? Gank it. Because you know that you're going to have tier 2, tier 2. Might as well get ahead because we saw the ward go down to this side. Right? Go down to this side to do his blue side quadrant. And he is probably thinking, I got away with that one, you didn't notice. Which means you're probably going to go here and see nothing, and then go for my red side. They're mind gaming each other in the stupidest way possible. So what you do is you say, okay, look, I'm just going to go gank the bottom lane. I'm, you can take this first if you want. Take this first if you feel like you need to wait a little bit for the bottom lane to have a better setup. But then gank it. Get ahead of the work in case he wants to gank after this. Uh, after doing the blue side, right? If he goes back to the top side. Don't really care. And that's the most important thing here. Now, obviously, I understand this matchup can be, you know, interesting, but... Oh, dear. Oh, uh-oh. Okay. Oh, I thought for a second. Hey, maybe we would go and invade uh, the, the, the Warwick's top side here. We did see the Warwick go down to the bottom side, but I feel like we're going blind. We see the Tremor Sense on the red, so we know that the Warwick's on the red here. A bottom lane, look at this. You don't have results based at all. Now, I, I don't see these videos before I coach. I treat this like a raw coaching session. I open the replay, I have no idea what's going to happen. I can give you my thoughts before things occur. This is literally what I said in a live coaching session yesterday. Just accept your camps are gone and make a ganking action. And if they show, which the, in the coaching session, the enemy jungler did, right? He stole this blue side, fell back to his red side, ganked on the top side. We did our red side, saw all of this was gone, ganked the mid lane. Ah, the Hecarim's on the top side with a blue and a red, which means he didn't go back down to his blue. So I can go ahead and take his blue back. The delayed response, right? The delayed response, and you just gank the lane in the meantime. So the Rexa can easily just go boom, boom, take this, shove it up, get some experience, pull back, and we should have time for a 4 minute 20 uh, a crud camp. But if it's not available because you do that really efficiently, then just go back through the river and repeat gank the Ivern with a flash. And then you will have this up at 420, this up at 440 ish. You know that because the guy stole your stuff, that this will be up at 4, 420, and this will be up at 440. Right? So you've got all your camps at a second tier respawn, so you can sequence that nice and quickly. And the Rex side just didn't recognize these things. The Warwick is too worried about losing his, his red instead of just making a play down here. But fortunately for him, the bot lane uh, is winning. So now we're going to go here. We don't even look to see if the red... Or, like, we're not even looking at our tremor sense. Like, why did they buff it for this kind of player? And now we have no scanner, so we have no idea if it's watered if we're tracking it or not. We see where the sign is going to check this scuttle crab. He sees that it's gone. We're not just going to go and fight this guy. What, in the river, knowing that the warwick is on the top side here? It's a sign. You're level 3. He's level 5. He's going to lock you up with the Q. He's going to bounce you. Or Rex side. Warwick is rotating from who knows the hell knows where. Got a flash in for your Q3E combo. Uh, Rex side goes over the wall. Now we cannot do anything because we preemptively flashed. That's a warwick mechanic thing. That's a little silly. Um, but because we shoved the Rex side out... I'm okay with that. We can just steal this. Then we can steal this. Rexa can come out of base with um, an item advantage, which she already has, but we can get another one. And, you know... What are you doing? As a Rexai player, you have to have supreme jungle pathing understanding. You have to understand where your win con is, you have to understand tracking, you have to understand your predatorial nature. And at 56% win rate, you should be looking to leverage that wherever you can. And in this particular case, 
we got cheese, that's fine. You know, it does happen. You can't always ward everything. You can't ward this for the Nautilus invade and watch this. But if you're ever curious, Warwick's, Jarvan's, Kindred, Shaco's, Graves, you know, they're always going to try and do something like that. Not always, but they're more likely to over other junglers. You know, a heck room, like in our live coaching session, the heck room did it. And that was that was unexpected. You know, nice cheese by him. No one was watching entrances and we didn't think to ward it. Which is why as a farming jungler, as I tweeted, and I tweet these infographic threads lately, just slap a ward here at 108 if you're farming jungler. You don't need the scanner. And just observe that stuff. If you're Rek'Sai and you're worried about it, then just ward it at 1. Go get your scanner. Do your regular stuff. And if you see it, you can just vertical jungle. It's easy. It really is. Now, the Warwick, of course, has taken this after taking all of this. So if you're a smart cookie and you see the Warwick come and rotate to that kill on the top side, uh, his O with his red up, click it. You click on him. The work in game, top left of your screen, you're gonna see the buff timer, you see the red freshly started, which means you know that the guy just took his red. Which means he's most likely after going down to the bottom side from killing us in the mid lane, passed up. So once he's taken all my shit in the blue side, he's gonna reset, get his team at, most likely. Where's he gonna go next? Bottom side. So from the Warwick's perspective, boom, baby. This is what we talk about in the jungle course. This kind of fundamental right here, jungle denial from the Warwick's perspective, very, very good. If you can jungle denial in this elo, look at what you're doing. Like, this Rek'Sai has no clue what to do at all. You can jungle denial at this level, the, the Warwick's doing a very good job of it. They can't gank your lanes, they can't do anything because they're, they just don't have golden experience. They feel desperate because they can't actually match your tempo, they can't beat you 1v1. Nice Q snack, we'll take the dragon now, we have automatically winning bottom lane. Now, in a situation like this with the Warwick, you normally would want to go dive these things and make sure this bottom lane is snowballed, but they're handling business. So instead of diving, if they're handling business, just remove the enemy jungler, right? Jungle deny him, level 1 camps. Jungle deny with a counter gank level 3. Take your blue, deny the vertical so he can't take your red. See him ganking because he's got nothing else to do. Well, she's got nothing else to do in this case. Rotate and try and snack it up, and if you don't get anything, steal more shit, right? Absolutely huge jungle denial, and if I was making a course on this uh, from the uh, from the um, gold jungler perspective, I would put this Warwick in as a good example of this is what I'm talking about, this is how to apply it. And now again, we take the dragon, bot lane's winning, mid lane is doing okay despite the ganks, because I counter ganked it as the Warwick, he reacted, didn't finish his full clear, didn't finish the cheese or whatever, just reacted to it. Now I'm gonna go ahead and steal this. Obviously here you gotta pay attention if you have the smite or not. And uh, in this particular case, uh, the Rek'Sai rotates straight back over. So let's unpack this a little bit quickly. The Warwick decides to go through this, which is absolutely fine, all right? The problem is, you know, in these situations, we went ahead, did we smite the dragon? I hope we didn't. I hope we didn't. There's no reason to smite the dragon. Rek'Sai's dead, bottom lane is shoving, their bottom lane is dead, Ivan is there, we're not concerned about a Gwen coming over, there's no reason to smite this. If you want to go ahead and do some more denial here, right, go ahead and hold that smite, because now this is a good play, a little aggressive, and on the main channel when we talked about how you must jungle in patch 13.10, uh, but he also waffles way too much, like this should just be full commitment, full sand, full commitment, uh, no stress, just pull it, let's go. And if he's snappy about the decision and holds a smite, I think he can get it and get out, honestly. Because if he snacks his baby up, he's not going to be quite six, but he'll be close enough. The Rex says level four, has a housebound axe, and of course it's 56 percent one red. It takes way too long. Like right now, if you've got smite in your pocket, because we didn't smite the dragon, we were snappy about our rotation, you could easily probably smite this and get out. Yeah, without a doubt. Without a doubt. The Rex obviously gets it here, now we're just going into a first fight, Rex at full HP, we're not full HP, like that's... You don't want to fight it out. And in the, as I said, in the How You Must Jungle After Patch 13.10 video on the main channel, uh, the Rengar we were focusing on was doing a great job of this jungle denial as well, and, and adhering to the new changes in the game. And went for a very, very similar invade and got collapsed upon by the enemy jungler and even support. So there is risk in this kind of denial, like taking it to the next step. And, you know, as long as you feel like you're strong 1v1, you can smite it and get out, then I like to play. All right? That's what I'm talking about here. But you have to do that assessment, right? You can't go ahead and make this play in your game and be like, well, Rakai, you told me to do it and I died. Well, you died because you took too long on the drag and you took too long muffling getting over and you didn't save your smite. And you overestimated your 1v1 potential. When I make these plays, and you see highlights of it on the main channel when I'm Ord and I'm Zyra and I'm Volibear, it doesn't matter, I'm Mundo, and I'm running at them at their second red and I'm just killing them on it. I'm six, 
right? So your experience optimization needs to be a bit more efficient so that when you make that play there, you are six. And that's the crucial thing, right? Because now I have the ult spike, I have the smite spike, and that's it. Because if you steal this, get six, and then kill them, you can take this, gank this, just run across. Like, you just have so many things you can do. The game's completely over. But until that very moment, I was very happy with what the Warwick was doing. Nice swing a little bit. Obviously, that death compromises our tempo. The Rex is able to go to the top side and get anything she wants. What should she have done instead? Probably look to uh, gank for Pryo and get that Herald. Instead, let the Warwick get away with everything. But in this particular case, she's so far behind. It's worth kind of not doing that Herald because you can invest in your camps, get level 6, and then look for a good 6 spike here onto a Scion who has ult, ghost, TP, and the Warwick will most likely be rotating here as well. So be a little cautious about it. Alright. Now, this guy wards here because we see the Rex with a blue buff. Now Warwick says, okay, I'm gonna go to the top side. Rex has chunked again. She's just putting herself in really rough situations. We're scanning up the river here. There's no real reason to scan up the river here if you're Warwick, by the way. There's no reason to scan. Because you're just gonna be running at someone who's pushing. If it's... If it's warded, are you gonna stop to clear it? No. So it doesn't matter? No. What you can then do is basically say, cool, get the kill, shove the wave. Shove the wave really hard here with the Ivan. Shove it, shove it, shove it. Fall back and snack this baby. Scan here. And obviously Rex is now on the bottom side. So... Jungle denial is great, but then you've got to do your classic thing, impacting the lanes, making sure you get objectives, hitting your econ nodes, and yeah, the Rexa will catch up a little bit with some farm, but I don't think there's any real reason that she should get control of this game, you know? And of course, a lot of the mistakes here from the, are from the Rexa's perspective, but both junglers are allowed to do a good job, right? You're always allowed to do a good job and make plays, and that's, that's the thing. So, see, now we knew it was warded because we scanned up the river. See, this is silly. We walked up through the river as Warwick scanning, obviously looking at the Gwen, not paying attention to our surroundings. Razagul's disappointed, and now we're seen on this, so we will get collapsed upon. Silly. Now, does Rek'Sai just go for this or not? Because Warwick at this point has 1500 in pocket. Uh, Sion roots, ro no, mutates, <laughs> rotates and moves at the same time. So the Rek'Sai is going to kill the, uh, well, both of them. And now you're thinking, well, isn't this a great comeback? No, this is the Warwick kind of shitting the bed a little bit with the aggression. Uh, you know, if we could shove here nicely, and Daisy's also a little broken, though. I'm not gonna... What is Daisy? And thank goodness they're nerfing it. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Cool. Cool beans. This directs I got it, but... Yeah, okay. The bottom lane in the meantime, this is amazing, right? This is amazing. Look at this. 502, 204, 050, 020. Okay, the turnaround. Moon Man. Uh, 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 ooh. Come on, it's tense. And now you're thinking, as a bot laner, you're probably looking at this and going, where are my junglers? Gotta do the crap. Gotta, what, what is the, what is the Rexa gonna do here? Ah, he finally rotates over. Oh my goodness gracious. Oh dear me. Oh look. That was not safe for work. What the? <laughs> yeah. So, regardless, as the fellows get something back here, the most important thing that we should notice is firstly, the Rexa does this and then goes to Dragon and doesn't think to just loop back around and kill the Ezreal, shove him off. He goes straight, uh, she goes straight for the objective. I, uh, I, your guess is as good as mine sometimes. But this is the kind of stuff that it's all very well talking about jungle denial, tracking each other and playing accordingly. But if you don't keep your eyes up and look for these dives, you know, you're going to be on Twitter being flamed by bot lane duos. Because this Ezreal and the Nautilus are just straight up winning by themselves. Absolutely straight up winning by themselves. And no one's interacted with the lane until this moment, where Warwick just whiffed it and died, gave stuff to the Phileos, and then the Rek'Sai didn't help decompress the wave and push it out a little bit first, and died anyway during the dragon, which goes straight over to the Warwick, and the Phileos gets a shutdown, and now the Ezreal is like, ha ha ha. It's just a, it's a shit show in bot lane. And no jungler had impact here, right? And you can see where that impact should have happened. Hopefully. From Rexas perspective, sure we got cheesed, but as soon as we recognize the counter jungling and where the guy's going level 3, we just leave the base and we go for it. And you could have your Phileos in a much better position. 
At the same time, I do understand in gold, you have skill issue. Like if the ADC is just better, they're just better. But you still get fed and you can use that lead on the Warwick and wherever else on the map because you're still 440. You have 5.1k gold, 5.2. Warwick is 4.8. You have more gold because of shutdowns. And obviously heralds and obviously this was a complete gross misuse of the herald. If you spawn and you have a herald and it's like 13 minutes, just go somewhere and use it, right? You can fall back to farm afterwards because this is just silly. Ah, uh, wait, Warwick's going for this, so the Rexa will get plates, we'll kill the LeBlanc. Nice, there we go, plates granted to the Rexa, who's not ganking on the top side. We will get a kill on the uh, Ivern. 4 for one Warwick 3 3 2. So the Warwick's aggressive red buff invade here, I like the... I like it in principle. Just, you gotta always know that you're gonna get out, you're gonna have to understand those kind of timings. And again, if you honestly feel like, look, I don't have Smite, I'm not 6, I, Rexa could go show up there and I still lose 1v1, then don't, then don't do it. Pull back to your blue side, get six, loot back round, or bot lane. So bullet nicely. Or just cut in, invade the Rex's blue side, and take the Herald. So you can do that instead. Like, instead of invading the red, pull back for experience, cut in, and then do the same thing here, when the Rex side is level 4-5 still. Because you suppressed us so much early. Um, that, would be a good, that, that would be a good move, I think. Now, the Warwick is obviously taking all of this. Our Ezreal and Nautilus have moved to the mid lane, which is, which is also lacking a turret. This will be next to fall. Science level 11. There we go. Okay. Damage. You do nothing. She really wants to ult. She really wants to ult. Do it for the memes. Warwick's resetting here. Hmm. See, so from the Warwick here, you see this. Right? You see the tunnel here. You see this. You see this. Do you feel strong enough to beat the Rek'Sai 1v1. Let's apply some pressure. Also something we talk a little bit about as we get from the, the gold course to the black course, we talk a lot about the mid game. Because now you've, you know, done a decent job in this game. Not amazing, but you've done a decent job to get a lead and suppress the Rek'Sai's power curve, which has allowed your bot lane to flourish. Because if your, if your lanes are winning, just deny and stop them doing anything about it, which we did perfectly. So go ahead, catch this wave, stop pushing this up. Right? Just to push this up. Huge experience for you can really leverage this pressure here because it will force someone to come down. Because what I see a lot of is sometimes they'll send five people to kill your bot lane here or five people to kill the Scion and you can just keep applying pressure to the turret to the waves. Now they have to back and rotate to this. You can just reset. Your team respawns. Now you can group up for a Baron or uh, the next Dragon or something like this, right? So don't think we should base here with 1400 at all. And also, if you're going to go Tiamat and these items, you should have a Sheen, not a Kindle Gemina. Warhammer. Tiamat plus Sheen, please. Much better combos. Also, I would recommend Trinity Force in games where you have a big lead, but against this particular comp, the Divine Sundra is still fine and still good. But we should be pushing the bot lane now. We see all of this. We should be on this. Smacking it away, slapping it, slapping it, slapping it. And um, allows you to end the game quicker, right? Push the lead a bit more. Ezreal does this. Nice hook. Unlucky. An Ivern, shield, ult, Aphelios. Might as well ult him and kill him because we can. Can we get the passive buff? No, we'll just hook him off. Then we'll get that kill. Nicely done, but there's what to follow. The Warwick is now not involved in this game whatsoever. This is the problem with this kind of stuff. Is your team are doing work and you're not joining up with them. Please join. Now, do you need to join them in the mid lane? No, just push out the bottom lane. Could you rotate to the mid lane if necessary? Yes, should the Nautilus do this? No. Is it anything to do with you? No. That's why we're pushing bottom lane. Ivan's gone back up. Warwick's now in a bit. See, this is what I'm talking about. You go mid lane with everybody, you follow their ADSC, and you all die under turret instead of whacking this at this particular stage. And now, instead of having four or five people here killing your Nautilus and Ezreal, there's only two or three. So maybe they can actually survive and then rotate to the top lane and take this one. What if, what if, what if? But it's also a good what if, because it's, if you're doing the right thing, better things will happen than these things. Yeah. So not much happens then, uh, they kind of just chill, we take the second Herald. Again, our bottom lane, are, and everyone's trying to group up to shove, we're gonna go take that Herald, which I think is fine in this particular case. Let's see. You don't want to overdive though, you see Red Team keep doing this. The war just isn't involved, the Rex is getting a few cleanup kills here. Um, you know, making the plays, we're just focusing on objectives. The war just really fallen off a cliff in terms of decisions and impact, kind of sucks. Sucks, because it, it was a pretty solid early game from a cheese perspective, I think. Take this, there we go, force the rotations, but now you're going to be collapsed a month, so you need to leave. 
You need to leave. It's not worth the inhib. Because you give them a dragon. Well, in theory. Wait, maybe I am wrong. Maybe this is god mode? No. You're never getting an inhib and it's not worth dying for the inhib because now you could just cut up, take all their shit, collapse on the Gwen if she's there and push this out as well. You can also just kind of fall back here and go for the dragon because you know this Herald will absorb that pressure there. Always looking for that move. Do you follow, right? It's always the chess piece moves. If you're just going to try and brute force down the middle, ain't a lot going to happen. They don't actually take the dragon whatsoever. They just farm their own camps. Warwick's just going to respawn. Everybody's grouped up here. TB committed. Flash committed. I don't know why. You know they're on the dragon, right? So now you're pushing beyond vision line. Nautilus is flanking. Rek'Sai's like, guys, we shouldn't be doing this. He dies. Gwen is over here. And this is the gold throw. Well, not that, were, not that they were winning anyway, but they threw the comeback. They threw the comeback. Nice cube by the Scion here. Very nice cube by the Scion. He's played well. The hitbox on those, those cubes are not good, right? Like, it's not healthy. Like, they need to know if the hitbox on the Nautilus cube. It really is obscene what we see here. As we push the bot line, you see here, right? The waves are just not in a rotational position. By that, I mean, can we shove and take a turret, take an inhib, and then rotate to the next one? No, because the waves are pushed all the way back. That's because while our team is playing and being caught out and while things are happening, when we could be pushing them, we're not. Like here on the Krugs, it's work. We didn't push it. From Rex's perspective, all you're doing is looking for these missed positions and then going in. Don't overcommit. You're not ending the game here. Just take the inhibit mounts, man. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, if you're Rex, you don't really want to. That's a good stopwatch animation, though. Uh huh. Okay. Not much here, ladies and gentlemen, other than take the inhib, leave. Reset, and I'll take your whole red team over and take this sucker using the pressure you have here. So I can kind of maybe apply a bit of macro onto the middle inhib as well. The last thing you want to be doing is dying. So again, waste of time. Warwick tries to go mid lane, doesn't get anything. Falls back here, will most likely get the scuttle crab. Just be careful here. There we go. I have nothing to say at this point for once. Ivan rotates up, dies to the Gwen. Very good champion. Fun and engaging. Red team should just regroup up nicely. We see their Phileos there, so we're like, pull the trigger. Go, 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 go. Guys, you see the ADC on the Krugs on the bottom side? Just start the Baron up. Just start it up. If they show up, you have numbers advantage. You can't TP. Also, he's 2 and 8. Let's go. Let's go right now. Onto this Baron. We're starting it up. Go, 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 go. It's too slow. So if you're in gold and you're looking for free wins, this is a great example of how... You could win by 2018. And if you watch the Graze video on the Gameplay channel from yesterday, it's exactly what I expect the Warwick to be doing in this case. Or whatever champion you're playing. But these games, which are free in the bag wins, you don't make them free in the bag wins. You slow them down because you don't pull the trigger on these Barons. You don't push the map a little bit when you can. You don't rotate to your team when you should, and you rotate when you shouldn't. And that's a lot of the mid-game stuff. So try paying attention to that as much as you can. And, uh, you know, you'll notice your map is a little better at 23 minutes. Because this game does feel like it's at a 30-minute marker. It isn't. At all. But, you know, when you close at 28 or 25, when you could close at 20, 22, what do you do? You allow room for comeback. Now, not against a Rek'Sai comp, uh, especially one who is, you know, not playing exactly very well this game. But if it's a Karthus and a, you know, Seraphine and uh, Ziggs and... And hyper late game things, a Kaisa, you know, you don't want to give them the opportunity to maybe come back into the game because you just didn't close properly with your team who had the lead. The war against 454, tragically terrible game actually, apart from the early phases. Really missed the ball and, uh, you know, I got a bit ahead of myself on the red buff invade. You saw that, I'm like, okay, I'm going to go for it because I put myself in that position. I know what I would do. And I didn't even realize, oh wait, he doesn't have smite, so then it becomes a less good play, right? So after that moment, he just fell off a cliff and didn't pay attention to some of the fundamentals and little things. Rek'Sai didn't pay attention to anything in the first rotation and really was just playing catch-up the whole time. So both junglers, lots of area for improvement. And if you want your own improvement, don't forget to follow me on Twitter for free information. And the courses are on the website, but also a special announcement for that coming soon, hopefully around July 1st. Maybe a private Discord or something like that with, uh, you know, a jungle club for improvement. That's all I'm going to say. See you all in the next one.